Hello and welcome to the Body Meets Mind podcast, philosophies and strategies for an elevated life. My name is Paulie and this is Tom. How are you, sir? And my name is Tom. <laughs> my name is Paulie. <laughs> no, I'm What's well, happening, mate. <laughs> oh, mate, um, all sorts of things. Um, loving the book I'm reading at the moment. Um, I'm reading, have you, heard the, have you heard of How to Do the Work by Nicole Lapara? No, I haven't, but uh, very keen to sink my teeth into it. Yeah, it's really good. I, um, I've been following her for a while um, um, and I've interviewed her a couple of times and um, she's the holistic psychologist on Instagram. Mm. And um, she's a very necessary voice in our world at the moment. I think, um, you know, even in the clinical model, when you do, you know, you study um, psych at uni, there are talks around integrative psychology, the bio psycho social model, having a look at all the factors that make a person a person. Um, but she really was the first psychologist, as far as I'm aware, doctor of clinical psychology, um, who really started talking about the importance of diet, sleep, breathing, um, mm -hmm. all these other factors, environment that um, really count for much more than, than, than what we think, uh, especially when you, you start to think about just how, how much we got it wrong um, with the with the chemical imbalance theory that was actually always just a theory as far as I'm aware. Um, so yeah, just a really necessary voice in our world and probably a really good segue into kind of some of the stuff we'll be talking about today. Yeah, great and lovely segue. Let, let, let's really just introduce so what, what we are going to be talking about today are various different eating protocols and diets if you want to refer to it as that for for different lifestyles and what's kind of worked for us and what we might be able to shed some light on that might work for you based on what your lifestyle is and um, what your experience of life is because ultimately look we're not we're not nutritionists we're not dietitians um, but what we do have is a, a wealth of experience when it comes to um, using our own, own bodies and minds as guinea pigs and yes. um do is just share our own experiences with you guys and you take from that what you will theoretically and then you can apply that to your life um, obviously in a safe way we are not responsible for anything that happens wrong <laughs> that's exactly right <laughs> batteries may not be included <laughs> <laughs> for sure so, uh, we, yeah um without any further ado should we get the ball rolling with uh, some of the um you know things that you've experimented with in the past um and uh we'll take it from there yeah yeah so i'll i'll be really um up front here my, my <laughs> part of the reason why I got interested in, in, um, different forms of eating was, uh, when I first started dating my lovely other half, um, I had a real snoring issue and, um, to some degree, I, I still have a relative snoring issue, although I know exactly where it comes from right now. In other words, I can eat a certain food and I know 100% that I'll wake up the next day and Siobhan will be like, Hey, you were fucking snoring all last night. Um, so it is, really? kind of, Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Um, but that's how I got into it. So I, what's, I, the re, what's the what's the biological response to to this? I'm sure you'll get into it now. So yeah, uh, yeah. No, 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 no. Well, my, I mean, my if I have too much wheat or dairy, my nose just clogs up. It's and and within 20 minutes, it's very interesting. I can tell you straight away if I've had uh, wheat and dairy. And what's really interesting is when I first started creating content, um, kind of. I was creating audio content and podcast form 2016, but I started doing video 2017. I look back on those videos and I sound so much more clogged up. I really sound kind of like that, you know, when I'm talking and, you know, a bit younger, so I'm a bit more of a bit more bravado, I suppose, but it's fascinating to go back and watch those, you know, um, <clears throat> videos. And, um, but anyway, I, I, I was allergic to everything under the sun as a kid. Um, you know, beans, tomatoes, eggs, all nuts. I had asthma, just had a real kind of mm -hmm. autoimmune thing going on, you know. Um, it was always pretty well accounted for um, so long as I took my asthma medication and so forth, but uh, started hearing more about how people were, um, you know, taking a root cause approach to get rid of all of these symptoms, mm. you know. So you got asthma, well, let's deal with it with, with a preventative. And people were saying, well, if you just don't have this, you won't have asthma. So there's no need for a coping strategy. Mm -hmm. I felt very empowered by that ideal, um, by that idea, excuse me. So 
you know, long story short, started to play around with different things. I was also a very, very much an unconscious eater, you know, so I was eating cookies and pizza and burgers and bullshit all the time. Uh, things I still love now, mm. but a little bit more consciousness to it because yeah. um, yeah. I was training all the time, all the time. So I was just all about bulking, you know, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. and doing it in a very uh, unscientific bro science kind of way. Um and uh, anyway, started playing around with things, looking into different sorts of things, tried veganism for about two, three weeks. Um, probably not enough time to really give it a fair crack. Um, but all of the, 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 the nuts, I mean, I couldn't have nuts, but the seeds and it was very carbohydrate dense and that didn't really sit well for me. I really found lots of dumps in my energy um, with the high insulin response from a heavy carbohydrate uh, meal. Um, mm -hmm. Tried a bit of keto. I've never really done things perfectly. I've, I can't really ever state that I've tried a specific diet, you know. Um, but the big things that 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 have improved my life massively have been limiting wheat, dairy, sugar, and alcohol. Although I, you know, I still have them from time to time. Of course, I had a wine last night. I'm not. I'm not insane. Um, seed oils as well, you know, getting out vegetable oils and canola oil, which is in everything like that's so hard to get rid of. Um, um, and what I found generally is that anything is better than a standard Western diet. Um, yeah. so yeah, what, what's, what's your experience been? Well, firstly, like it's, it's awesome because you, you had something that I mean, it's not awesome because you you obviously experienced a lot of discomfort at, mm, early on mm. in life. But what that urged you to do was to um, seek answers early yes, on, yes. and you had the awareness to be able to kind of say, right, I can actually uh, address this with things other than medication, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you looked at, at at something, and you know, what is it that uh, is it Hippocrates that says food be like medicine or right. whatever. Right. It might be, uh, and, and that is the first place we should look because that's yes. the kind of stuff that we we shove in our faces multiple times a day, and we don't even consider it as medicine, but it does have such a dramatic effect on our uh, biological response. So, um, totally. kudos to you for doing that. And like, wh where is your uh, asthma at now as a result of that? So, so I should probably mention for context as well. You so back in 2016, before I started doing all this sort of stuff, um, so I had anaphylaxis to nuts, been hospitalized multiple times. Um, in 2013, it was really bad. I had uh, a double overnight stay. I had a second reaction. My oxygen levels dropped to 30%. So it was this was pretty severe yeah. anaphylaxis. Um, I'd ingested a whole heap of, um, of peanut butter by accident. I didn't know what it was. I came home drunk from a night out. Oh no. Melbourne Cup night. And there were these kind of peanut butter sausage rolls in the house. And I was like halfway through one before I started choking up. And the photos are actually quite distressing because I it's like it's like the bear grills beasting. Wow. <laughs> image. It's it's crazy. But yeah, uh you get, you get, you, do you feel comfortable sharing them on the podcast? Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to put them up. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Come on, guys, tune in. Yeah, so yeah we'll, we'll get some content. Love That's it. right. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, is like um in 2016, my immune system was so reactive that if there was a bit of pollen in the air, this happened on two occasions as I was driving to the CrossFit gym that I was working at to coach a 6 a.m. class. There was pollen in the air. I had the windows down. Halfway through the 6 a.m. class, I had an anaphylactic reaction and had to drive home and, be, and, and, and go to hospital. Wow. Because as soon as you use an EpiPen, you have to go to hospital because an EpiPen is a temporary reliever. But we're not sure if it... If the uh, once the adrenaline wears off, you'll have to go back again. So this was a really big deal mm. for me. And um, looking into diet, you know, was was tough in the beginning because when you've been doing something for so long and eating a certain way for so long, you just don't have any comparison, you know. And mm. now, if I have a Tim Tam, I'm aware of the inflammatory response it's had on my body. And I think, and I should mention mm. this again, this is probably, we really wanted to just state from the beginning that this is just our own experience and we're not dietitians. I, I probably should um, state that for whatever reason, I think my immune system isn't as robust as, as other people's. Um, 
I think I think immune issues are ubiquitous in the world. I think we all have reactions if we have too much wheat and dairy and sugar and seed oils and so forth. Um, but because it's been with me for life, you know, I started having anaphylactic reactions when I was two. So this really is a, I would say more of a biological thing within me. It's not like yeah. all of a sudden I started eating cookies at 16 and then I, and then all these things happened, you know, um, mm, yeah. but it was really bad. And, and what I have learned now is that um, cutting out those things 80% of the time, 20% of the time, like tomorrow night, um, you know, the rings of power latest episode comes out and I'll just be smashing burgers and I'll probably have a beer. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it, you know? Um, so I don't want to be crazy with all this kind of stuff, but yeah, for the most part, it's, it's led to a massive improvement in my life. Um, intermittent fasting as well. My, my ability to focus as someone with ADHD and OCD, um, you know, it has had a just an, it's almost a, an indescribable effect on my life doing these things. Mm. So. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And uh, we are so up against it um, being bred on bread. Yes. <laughs> uh, I thought you were going <laughs> to. Um, but amongst other things, you know, like we're, we're, we're really, really fed. Uh, I'm going to stop all these puns, but like, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we, we, we so um, you, you know we're, we're brought up in the 80s like if you're a child in the 80s and 90s you're brought up with all of these um messages sent to you from mass media saying yeah. you know the old food pyramid this is the way that you should be eating and the the vast majority of that is wheat mm. um and it's it's pretty clear that you know mass produced wheat does have this high inflammatory response so yeah. segueing from that uh to what i've found to to, to yeah. be really really yeah. beneficial for me and i've tried various different things over the years um well can i just you know, you okay. quickly paulie sorry we, we, yeah you what what led you to get into this were you suffering in some way or what 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 were yeah. you interested in diet? Uh I was a fat kid. Um okay, nice. uh, I, I was uh, I was I, I was I was overweight as a as a child and uh I think when I you know kind of stepped into 15 16 years old um I think I I, I just wanted to kind of start molding my body uh take a little you know interest in in girls started to to yeah. take it and um you know the, the the old the rest is history type of thing so yeah. i wanted to take a little bit a bit more more pride in my uh appearance and uh, i also then as a result beca became fascinated with how far i could um push my body from an athletic perspective as well yeah um so that's kind of uh where things uh happened uh for, for, for me there uh and um, in my probably late twenties, I really became fat, like I became heavily kind of immersed in that CrossFit world, and uh, hand in hand with the CrossFit world was the, was this new thing called the Paleo diet, mm. and mm. it was like my my mid twenties maybe, uh, and I don't even know what diets are aligned with the, uh, CrossFit now, but Paleo was just this new. Uh, thing that that people were talking about and i and i really became immersed in the crossfit uh vernacular and the culture and all, everything associated with it so anyway um i i tried um this out and it really gave me a tremendous amount of benefits obviously the mm. first two weeks detoxing off a lot of these types of things just to break down what 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 paleo is is it's, yep. a, it's the hunter gatherer diet you know <laughs> it's essentially anything that you could kill um uh, harvest or, or gather uh and uh you know there's a lot of memes and jokes associated <laughs> with it which uh which are pretty funny but yes. it was a relative base level i still think it's pretty sound and i am not a dogmatic person in any sense of the word so i don't you know i, I never took everything that the paleo like the watertight philosophies of it mm. to to heart and then just that's it no that's not the way i looked at it but what mm. i did do was i removed wheat for the vast majority of what i was doing so um i'd have salads instead of sandwiches for lunch i would um don't even know what i had for breakfast uh but uh, uh you know 
it was just changing your, your understanding and your format and also knowing that, um, you know, you, you get an adequate amount of protein, fats, also understanding those macros because I yep. coupled it with um, what's it called? Um, it was massive in the uh, 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 the uh, the CrossFit world. I'll, I'll, I'll remember it. It's yep. it, it was about getting those uh, those ratios of macros uh, down pat, and I found that to be very beneficial mm-hmm. as well. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, the overarching macro philosophy of Paleo was great because it removed um, a lot of inflammatory foods for me, which was yep. uh, predominantly um, wheat uh, and sugar. You yes. know, um, yeah. and once we take that out, then, uh, and, and this seems to be really, really simple kind of um, logic yes. to apply in 2022, yes. but in, you know, 2008, it, it actually wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, <clears throat> uh, you know, and again, you know, speaking, speaking to your experience as well as, uh, as very similar with mine, just recognizing that what what we are surrounded by isn't necessarily at all the right way and and you and you make a great point you know um mass media marketing you know when i was growing up it was Kellogg's, coca pops you know i grew up watching cheese tv from you know in in australia like late 90s early 2000s um mm-hmm. dragon ball z you know um pokemon and in in the ads, you're watching you're watching adverts about Cocoa Pops, and I would go on, um, I would go to to breakfast with Mum, and we'd have Cocoa Pops together, you know, and that's that's what it was like, and it was really fun, you know. And then we wonder why these kids can't sit down and settle, you know. There's a lot of sugar going on in those things, you know, and sugar oh, is a yeah. heavy drug, you know. Um, it's a great yeah. drug, <laughs> but it's a crazy drug, <laughs> you know. But, but especially for developing mind. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's just impossible to create a kind of sustained level of, um, attention focus because you get hyperactive and then you feel that dump, you know? Um, but, but speaking to your experience, it's just, there's, there's motivation to change. And then what tends to happen is experimentation. And I think Mm -hmm. just speaking, um, psychologically, there's something in, in our world called the stages of change model, which I really enjoy. And it's mm-hmm. good to help people figure out kind of where they are on that. You know, um, sometimes people don't even want to change at all. Sometimes people are in that sustained maintenance level. Mm-hmm. Other times people are kind of thinking about it, but haven't started to make the right, the right moves yet. What tends to happen with individuals is that when we find the motivation to change, we expect results instantly. But what I really love about your journey is that you moved into a stage of, experimentation Mm. and maintenance and experimentation are two of the same kind of things that I think we need to remember than when we're trying to change and improve our lives is that maintenance is, I think when we finally make the motivation to find the motivation to change, we expect that once we get the result, that'll be us for the rest of our life. Mm. But the journey of life is about experimenting, you know, and Mm. we'll never get to this place where now I have the perfect diet, I eat perfectly, and this is who I am. It's not, I'm always finding things out and improving them. Spot on. And and I think, you know, our experience of life and who we are will continue to change and evolve. So Mm. what served us from a dietary perspective in the past may not serve us now because everything internal will, will be changing. And that's what I find with myself right now. Like, um, you know, uh, which leads me to, to to something I've been really experimenting with uh, and using in, as a commonplace over the last probably three, four years of my life, which is intermittent fasting or yes. time-restricted eating. And I find that this is just works for me yeah. as a dad, you know, in terms of supporting my lifestyle. When I wake up, I have a black coffee. Well, first I have uh, a bunch of water. Uh, and then I have a black coffee and I generally don't eat until 12 o'clock or yeah. one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. And that works for me because I'm clearer of mind. Uh, I have the ability to be able to uh, also, uh, you know, have greater control over the calories that are going into my system, um, which, you know, if you're looking for body composition, that can also be an effective strategy mm-hmm. uh, for that. Um, and I, 
uh, yeah, it's just it's just easier. It's mm-hmm. just more straightforward. I mean, you don't have to prepare anything. I wake up really early in the morning, you know, like I don't want to have to add an additional 15, 20, 30 minutes of uh, breakfast preparation time uh, to my day. And I love food. Don't get me wrong. I freaking love food. Like I think it's uh, an amazing thing. And I also think it's a, uh, it's an art form that has been, um removed from a lot of modern uh, day culture mm. from a lot of modern day families as well mm. the, the 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 you know the rituals of being able to sit down at a family as a family or whoever it might be and to be able to break bread together so yes. to and to be able to talk about your day and all that kind of stuff i feel like everything's a little bit fragmented and mobile now but you can still do that um and in fact I do still do that in the mornings with my kids when they ate, when they ate breakfast in the, on the weekend, sit down and have a cup of coffee with them, you know, and this is what I also tell a lot of my, um, uh, you know, my, my hero dads and mums. It's like, you know, I want to be able to go, they, they tell me I want to be able to go out with my family for breakfast. Well, I'm like, if we're trying this, this way of eating, which is not for everyone, mm-hmm. But if this is what you're trying, you can still be there. You can still be a really, really powerful presence in your family's life. Just the the engagement that they're getting from you is not the fact that you're putting food in your face. Yes. It's the fact that you're present. It's the fact that you are um, sitting there and you're asking them questions and you're engaging with them. And you can do that with a cup of coffee or a glass of water. Yeah. you know, and uh, th- th- that is something that I've, it's just a, a mindset shift, so to speak. Mm, yeah, I really love that, man. And, you know, I th- something else I really love that you mentioned before is that, um, you know, how diets can change in response to different goals, you know, and straight away an image, you know, both both of us being, um, being guys, you know, the first image that comes to mind is um, a woman who's pregnant, you know, um, and, and all of the, the hormonal changes and the dietary requirements were needs. I think from memory, um, mum, my mum was, um, had this, this real craving for Turkish delights and broccoli. Now, mum, if you're listening, I, I could have got that wrong. I'm pretty sure that's right though. I'm catching up with her not too, too long after this, <laughs> but like it's amazing. Together? Like, no, I don't think together. together or... Turkish delight just melted over a broccoli. <laughs> I'll have to ask her, but, um, <laughs> But, but but going with that, you know, and there's, there, there's a friend of mine who's a psychotherapist and she talks about intuitive eating. And I really like that concept as well because yeah. what it speaks to is being able to reconnect with your body and its needs, you know, and and and, and there's, there's a great power to be had in that, you know. Yeah. Um, do I really feel like the sugar right now or am I actually just bored? you know, mm-hmm. or actually, am I really hungry? In which case, give me that sugar, you know, cause I haven't eaten for a while and I've been training too much or what, whatever it is, you know, and yeah. I can only imagine what that would be like to, to be pregnant and feeling into the, the incredible, um, you know, needs and things that come up in response to, to, to what's going on in the body there. But you're exactly right, you know, and, and bringing this back to our experience, um, taking more an intuitive approach. You know, I, I played around with the carnivore diet yeah. and I, I will say that I don't feel any healthier than when I'm eating mostly grass fed beef, um, avocado and eggs, you know, and Got that's it. kind of boring, but I could eat once a day and be thriving. In fact, I did that two days ago. You know, I'll just have a fair amount. Like I'll have four, grass-fed burgers, four eggs, two avocados, and I could speak with six clients a day and I feel amazing. And what's even better about that is the next morning I can wake up really early and because there's nothing in my mm. system that's really weighing me down, I feel like I've had 10 hours of sleep. You know, so that's that's quite a radical thing and I don't do that all the time, but sometimes if I really feel like I want to own the day, I will kind of employ that strategy. It's interesting. I've, and I've never gone down that path, but like, tell me a little bit more about um, this kind of all way of eating, because I've, I've done a little bit of research into it, but I'm, I'm keen to hear your take on it and how you've kind of employed it into your life. Yeah. So again, you know, I'm not an expert in this. I don't have a medical um, background whatsoever or dietitian's background, but um, purely from following people who, who, who advocate this way of living. Um, um, there are people out there like Paul Saladino, um, 
Um, uh, Carnivore Aurelius, he's a big one. Jordan Peterson, clinical psychologist, he actually does it, although he only talks about his experience as well. From what I understand, the, the people who are against it, which I'm always fascinated by because I want to make sure that I'm molded into an accurate perspective, um, view it very much as just an elimination diet. Mm. So if you only eat meat, um, you're going to feel a lot better than if you're eating heaps and heaps of bullshit, of course, but it might not necessarily be nutrient um, dense or you might not get all of your little micros or whatever it is, although there's a lot of pushback on that idea too. But the reason why I don't just eat meat is because it's just boring. You know, I want to go out and enjoy a palma with a mate or whatever it is. I, I still, I love unhealthy food. You know, I will be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, what I try to see it as is it's the, 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 the gold standard or the pinnacle of my feeling healthy. So if I feel like I've had a couple of bad nights, then I might just have a day or two of just doing that to find that homeostasis again. But as far as what mm. I can understand is, the context behind the carnivore diet is, um, you know, it's like paleo times 10. We think back to um, hunter gatherer tribes. Yes, we were eating nuts and seeds and fruits and fruits and vegetables, but we were most excited by meat, killing meat and then cooking it. And there's, there's, a, there's a whole lot of theories out there that suggest that the development of the prefrontal cortex was in response to eating meat. And, mm. and fire, but we used fire to, you know, see after dark, which is mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and then also cook our meat. Um, so, so, and it's just interesting looking at people's um, experience with it, you know, the amount of weight people lose, all of the mm. immune issues that just literally go away. Mm. And, you know, and, and these things aren't supposed to go away. Yeah. You know, according to big farmer or the Western model or whatever it yeah. is, it's, you know, mm. these are things that you have to manage if you have asthma, or if you have, you know, whatever it is, it's like, and these things just go away, you know? So it is, it's interesting. I try to be skeptical, but speaking from my own experience, it, it, uh, it feels good. That's great. That's, that's awesome. And, you know, like I, I've, I've heard, I heard, I listened to a great podcast one so on a very uh, from a very knowledgeable guy who uh, had had got, gone through the self experimentation of it and the theory out there for you know obviously you're not eating vegetables and uh, you know w w when you're on a pure meat diet but there's a theory of if you're eating high quality uh, meat you know it's it's the vegetables that that meat had eaten in its past had ha have been processed through mm -hmm. these animals and the enzymes that um you know are enlivened through this process we actually take on yes whether that's true or not i don't know yes. <laughs> you know but it sounds cool <laughs> sounds cool right um so so anyway it's it is fascinating it's interesting um look to, to close in what, what i have found yeah. to really work for me is uh time restricted eating uh yeah. works for me doesn't yeah. I, I don't do it all the time probably do it like five out of seven days, uh, you know. I go through periods where I have seven days completely for, for long periods of time and then sometimes I, I'll go through a period for like a few weeks where I, I just will have breakfast, yes. you know. Um, it varies. Um, the thing that I find has the greatest um, impact on me is cutting shit out after dinner. Yes. Like, it sounds really simple. You know, people have all these sexy diets with yes. the <laughs> carnivore diet and the vegan diet. What about just not eating shit after <laughs> breakfast, after, after dinner, you know, yeah. like that's, that's something that is really, really uh, simple, but I guarantee you, at least in my experience, that's going to have the biggest effect on your mind uh, on your your mindset, but also on your body composition, if that's what you're looking to achieve as well. Mm. Like you can, you know, have a vegan uh, carnivore, paleo, uh, intermittent fasting uh, diet um, where, where you're doing all these different things. But ultimately, if you if you're going to go to the Cadbury block and have half of it at the end of the end of the night, that's you're right. going to feel like crap, right? Yes. Um, and you're going to put on body fat. 
So depending on what your goals are, whether it's mental health, whether it's uh, physical health and, uh, you know, uh, body composition, I have found, and this is just recent in the last few weeks, because I found myself getting back into the habit of just going to that pantry after I finished dinner. Yeah. Like literally, I have a sweet tooth. So literally before I finish my last bite of dinner, I am at that pantry <laughs> looking for something sweet to eat. Yeah. And I had a word with myself like a few weeks ago and I was like, this this is not okay. Like mm. <laughs> I need to, I, I need to, like I'm okay with having sweet things in my, in my life, but like the urgency in which I just found myself appearing in front of the, <laughs> uh, the, the pantry, it was yeah. like I didn't even use my feet. I just yeah. glided. <laughs> over there and and, uh i was like you know what i'm I'm actually just gonna make a bit of a a a rule for myself gonna gonna create a little bit of a a barrier here and that's after i eat dinner or after i eat a meal i'm just not having any sugar yeah and it's done wonders for me over the last few weeks like i feel clearer I, i i'm thinking clearer um i'm also dropping weight that i found had just come on as well mm-hmm. so these Sometimes, you know, we look for these really, really shiny objects, but sometimes it's the simple things that we need to consider as well. Oh, mate, absolutely. Low-hanging fruit, isn't it? You know, if we, if we, if we stop doing the things that we know aren't good for us, um, you know, that has a massive improvement as opposed to trying to think about what the right answer is to do. You know, there's, there's two ways of, of, of um, gaining perspective. You know, sometimes like, who do I want to be? You know, who am I inspired by? That's one side mm. of the coin. But the other side of the coin is who do I not want to be like? You know, what's a big issue that I think is a really big issue? You know, um, mm. I certainly don't want to do that. You know, whatever that is. And that's going to propel, you know, it's going to, excuse me, repel you um, mm. in the other direction. And that's really good to know as well. That's a great way to motivate. A hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, look, we've just shared our experiences of what, you know, um, various different eating protocols we've had for us. Um, take this um, however you want to. Bring whatever you want of this into your life and experiment with it. Let us know also. We're really, really keen yep. uh, to understand um, what has it has worked for you as an individual. Um, please write in the show notes or in the uh, the notes below, um, pr- presuming this is going to be on our YouTube channel. So, um, you know, put it in the, the notes below and uh, we'll, we'll be really, really keen to, to kind of share that dialogue. We're really keen to start uh, continuing dialogues after these episodes with you guys. So if you... Mm have any experience that you want to share with us, if you um, want to correct us on anything that we've uh, also, um, you know, kind of shared, we're, we're always open to to growing and uh, hearing any any feedback. So i um, looking forward to hearing everything from you guys, but ultimately, um, you know, try, try something. If you're not happy where you're at, try something. Don't just keep doing the same shit because yeah. you're going to get the same results. Yeah, love it. Love it. Always a pleasure, Paulie. We'll talk to you soon, hey? Thank you so much, Tommy. Thanks, guys.